Hi, I'm John Hines. I'm from, I'm originally from Team 2169 King Tech from Prior Lake, Minnesota. I'm Pratheeksha Malakarjan. I'm originally from Team 159 Alpine Robotics from Fort Collins, Colorado. Hi, I'm Marty Dave, Davis. I am also from Team 2169 King Tech from Prior Lake, Minnesota. And my name is Caleb Sykes. I am from Team 2052 Nightcrawler out of New Brighton, Minnesota. Hey guys, what do you think of this year's game? Well, I'd like to say this is probably one of the biggest deviations from uh, modern FRC games that we've had. And um, the reason I say that is because, one, you have no interaction this year, and the win-loss thing is a very huge change. And I feel like that really should change the mentality of what teams do when they're at competition. It's no longer uh, you versus them, red versus blue, when you're on those fields until the last match. It's really... Uh, just trying to score the highest points possible. So things like cooperation is huge. It's essential. Um, in autonomous, like it's all or nothing essentially. If your whole alliance can work together and get those things going, you do score those points. But if one chink of that armor does not work, you get nothing. So first seems to really want people to work together, whether it's on their alliances or if it's across the field from each other. Also, it feels like to me in another, another kind of sense of last year the goal was aerial assist, so the goal was kind of working together. But here it seems like another sense of that, kind of like autonomous, it's everyone needs to do their little bit to get the bigger points. So everyone needs to assist each other in helping to do that um, for like stacking the crates, the totes, and the recycling bins. They can focus on certain parts and work together, kind of not as actively as last year, but in a more passive sense where they each do put their little piece in to work together. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing for me is, uh, like has been said before, this is a very different game, like all around. Um, but if anyone remembers from last year, last year's game was also very different, but in a completely different sense. And I guess I'm kind of still getting over the whiplash that it just seems so different <laughs> all around. Like last year, no safe zones at all. It's just all the robots everywhere, so much defense all the time. And now this year, the entire field is a safe zone for either one side or the other. And there's like four or five rules in the rule book that make defense basically impossible and even if it were somehow possible to play defense in this game you wouldn't want to because it's not even a competition against the team you're up against it's you're trying to get the highest score to compete against every team at the event so I mean I I don't know if anyone's gonna try to do some kind of a defensive strategy but I really hope my team doesn't play against you because you've got the wrong idea about this game if you're doing that because it doesn't help you to have a higher score than me at the end of the match. <laughs> Absolutely. I think Caleb pretty much summed it up by saying that there, at least we couldn't figure out any way that defense is a viable option this year. Like, first is design this game essentially that offense is your best strategy to go further in the tournament. So, stick with offense. So, on that note, going into a tournament, what do you think the best strategy for a team is uh, on their side of the field? I guess that, uh, for me, that question sort of depends on um, what the goal of the team is to be. Um, so, personally, working with some of the teams, just trying to get into elimination is what they're looking for. So, I would probably put to some teams who feel maybe not confident with being the top scoring, trying to work for a good support role within any alliance. So one of my favorite ones would probably be just uh, working with their septical units and um, trying to score the noodles into them and possibly putting those on a stack of something and just focusing on that for most of the match. Um, because whoever's doing the speed stacking, the stacking of the totes on top, you know, that's probably going to be one of the more veteran teams or a team that's very has a very strong robot who can do that quickly. So someone who can just move maneuver in and just kind of put that uh, recyclable, which is kind of like a multiplier on top, would probably be a very uh, good uh, first or second pick. Yeah, and like kind of finding a portion of the game to focus on, as Martin yeah. said, and make that your, the goal that you work for is probably like the best thing to go for. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think every team should, there's a lot of tasks in this game, there's a lot of game pieces, there's a lot going on. Um, so pick something and do it extremely well for this game. 
Um, also, I mean, you're talking about best strategy coming in. If first keeps these rules the same, it's been called on Chief Delphi the noodle dilemma, or uh, I like to call it like intentional <laughs> littering or something. Like we make fun of it, but honestly, like the best strategy if they keep those rules going into an event is to understand the implications of that and to play with it because if if it stays the same, I mean we were kind of predicting some of the average scores and. I, I'd be surprised if the average score ignoring the Noodle Dilemma would get higher than 40, and the Noodle Dilemma could potentially get both sides 40 points. So if you could just, even if your robot does nothing, if you go into an event understanding what this thing is, and you can convince your partners and the opposing alliance to go along with this, um, you're going to end up high in the rankings, just based on how how this game is set up. And for those who don't know possibly what the noodle dilemma yeah. is, is so there's the system where if there's a noodle that is unscored on your side, you get four points to the other side. Both alliances start with ten noodles apiece. Mm -hmm. So if you could talk to them and persuade them to just throw all ten and you throw all your ten on the field, 40 points for both alliances. And just going with that, there's no reason not to do such a thing because it's okay to give them points if they're giving you points. Like, you both win out of this because you're just trying to get the highest average score. So you're not even facing the people on the other side. You're just playing at the same time. So why not help them out and do some cooperation with one another and just really just, you know, raise average scores. If, if people were to do that type of strategy, you could guarantee everyone get at least 40 points in every single game working together. Yeah, and kind of what they said, and Martin briefly touched on is, it's not very, whether first wanted it to be, but reality is it doesn't seem very different from the actual named cooperation part of the game. It's you have to work together with your opponents to score more points for both teams, or both alliances. So it's an interesting mechanic. I think what all three of these guys have been saying that they haven't really said explicitly <laughs> is that this game isn't just about what you build your robot to do. It's about how well you can talk to other people and how well you can strategize before each game. Strategy does not stop when you figure out what you want your robot to do this year. You have to scout and you have to talk to every team on your alliance before a match. This year more than any other year before because every strategy that you like things that these guys have talked about that you can do without a robot those things are only going to be successful if you talk to the other teams so that's also an important thing to remember going into every tournament the, the one other small strategy note i want to touch on if your driver is going to be practicing you know driving around which i hope every team is doing um i would encourage uh, your drivers to practice for a while blindfolded because the field is going to be a mess. They're going to be, <laughs> you know, there's going to be uh, totes everywhere. There's going to be giant robots everywhere. There's a very clear pattern on the field. It's kind of like a maze. You got to go left, then you got to go right, and then you end up back in the middle. So the really good drivers will have that pattern down by heart and will be able to do that with their eyes closed. And at the high levels, you're going to need to because the stacks are going to start getting high and the robots are going to be big and you won't be able to see what's going on uh, unless you, you can get that pattern down. So, just a small thing. Um, one thing I want to say before we move on, um, going back to Prath was talking about talking with other teams. So in years past, it's been really important to talk to Alliance members, and this year is no exception. Like, you need to talk to Alliance members. But this is probably the first year where I think people, and I heavily recommend this, you need to talk to the other team playing against you in that match. And I'm not going to even talk. say opponents anymore because... <laughs> the team on the other side of the field. Yeah, because yeah. really you're just game mates. Like, you're both playing the game at the same time on just different sides of the field. It's just time saving. Like, mm -hmm. you should talk to them too because trying to work out how to do that cooperation um, points, huge. Talking about the noodle dilemma, huge. So just because there's a red alliance and a blue alliance and people might cheer for one side, they're no longer your opponents this year. The only match where there's actually an opponent, in my opinion, is the final match, <laughs> eliminations, where it's the highest score in that match who wins. All right, well, thank you guys so far. I have one more question for you. What is Snow Problem's strategy this year? So we decided to make a robot that, after kind of going through the design process that Go First likes preaching in our mock kickoffs, <laughs> Um, where we kind of look at all the options and then design like our concept of like the ideas of things that we want to do, not looking at the robot actually built. 
we decided we made a list of our stuff in importance. Before you say that, I just want to address really quick that Snow Problem has always been, um, the our goal has always been to show teams not just like the most common thing or what we think most people are going to do, but what would be a good support role. That's what we came into this thinking. So before he describes our actual like <laughs> point by point strategy, I just want to make a point that we chose to go with a strategy that's more of a support role, more of a niche, being a specialty robot that's really good at one thing or a couple things instead of a robot that can do everything. Yeah, okay. our, our goal before we even went into our strategy discussion or what we wanted to do is we agreed as a team that we wanted to build a robot that we were certain was going to make it into the elimination rounds. Probably not as one of the top eight, probably not even as a first pick, but one robot that if this robot was on your alliance, you could go into that second round without fear of, oh no, am I going to be picked or not? You just know your robot's good enough at what it does that one of those top teams is going to pick you. Um, so, and I, I would encourage every team to make that decision. We, my team, 4536, we made that decision, you know, a couple of months ago on what we're going to be doing. And it's the same as this, you know, we just want to make it into the elimination round. So, make sure on your teams you're deciding what goal you're going towards. Because there are some teams, their goal is to win the world championships. And the robot that they need to build to do that is going to be a lot different than robot that my team is going to build just to get into the elimination rounds at a single regional event. So, so that's how you based your, that's what you based your strategy off of. Mm -hmm. What is your strategy though? So the strategy that this group decided to go with is they're going for um, manipulation of their recyclable container. Um, what this means is that they want to be able to pick it up, they want to be able to move around with it. Um, an important thing that we made sure would happen was to get the noodle into the recycling container. Um, they felt that, uh, you know, that six points is pretty powerful. It <coughs> equals six, uh, three totes um, in a scoring zone. And then the next important part was being able to manipulate that recyclable on top of the totes. Um, we felt that that's pretty much a score multiplier, like times three. So, 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 you know, four points for each level, two for each tote, you know, you would be very helpful and they felt that you know some teams are gonna go really fast with trying to stack totes up why don't we just try and multiply those stacks um. all right well thank you guys so much uh, I'm sure the teams out there will really enjoy your discussion